and we're alive. Hi, everyone. Hey. We're going to, uh, hey, good afternoon, Victor. Hey, Daniel. Hi, Alex. Hey, Ben. Hey, Loic. Hey, Carlo. Where are you guys coming from? <laughs> hey, Martin. Jesus, Humberto, Abu India. Chile. Leave it, Chile. Boston, Germany. Oh, my God. It's going so fast. Oxford, Italy, <laughs> Barcelona. Hey, Kurdistan, Pittsburgh, India, Colombia, Brazil, Kosovo, Atlanta, New York City. Oh, my God. This is so much fun. Calgary, <laughs> Toronto, hey, Italy. Hi, Austin. Hey, Madrid. Hi, Germany. Hi, Amsterdam. Hey, Beijing. Australia. Indonesia. Ecuador. Oh, my God. Are you guys sleeping? You should be sleeping right now. Munich. <laughs> <laughs> Brussels. Oh, from Mars. All right. Nice. Nice. Very international. <clears throat> Thanks, everybody, for joining. We're going to let uh, another minute for uh, people to settle in. Hey, Alex. Hey, Jerusalem. All right. This is uh, so much fun. We've been, uh, we've been waiting for, for this moment uh, for, for quite some time, working up to it. Um, super excited to uh, uh, show you uh, our new uh, infant's solution. Yay. Thanks, Alex. It's finally here. It is finally here. It's actually already here. It's here. We're just telling you about it now, but uh, we're, we're pushing the release button at the same time. Yes, this will be big for front end. I think this will be big for uh, for everybody because what we're doing is we're accelerating the adoption of uh, machine learning models, right? So that means that as a data scientist, I can go all the way. As a machine learning engineer, I can go all the way. As a software developer, I can pick a model and go all the way. So super excited. Yeah. All right. Um, maybe, maybe we should get started. What do you think, Philip? Sounds good. All right. I'll maximize myself uh and uh and uh and get started so today we are introducing a new solution on the hub to take your models and take them to production and that's called hugging face inference endpoints it's live today you can try it out today and i will tell you uh how it works and then philip will show you how it works in a demo and we'll leave 10 minutes at the end uh, for questions. I'm Jeff Boudier, I'm on the product team at Hugging Face. Philip is our tech lead and we're super excited to show uh, uh, Hugging Face inference endpoints to you today. And uh, let's get right into it. So what is this? What is Hugging Face inference endpoints? Well, it's a solution for you to easily deploy your models on dedicated and fully managed infrastructure. It's a solution for you to keep your costs low with security and a ton of flexibility. So what does that mean? What that means is that we made your models plug and play. What I mean by that is that any model you can take and plug in into your app or service using Hugging Face inference endpoints. All right, so why did we go about creating this thing? Um, one thing that came a lot in hundreds of conversations with uh, users of companies of any size is that a lot of the machine learning projects coming out of data science do not make it, make it into production, do not get integrated into an app or service. And there is uh, this stat I plugged from uh, VentureBit that says that 87% of data science projects never make it into production. And that's data science in general. Uh, for uh, the largest of models, for transformers, for diffusers, that stat is probably uh, underestimated. And the reason why what came up through all those conversations is that the process for a model to make it all the way into an app that people can use is pretty complicated, pretty convoluted, uses a lot of software, and it's a very lossy process. From the data scientist 
uh, that will take a, a user notebook to create and fine tune a model and get a checkpoint. For that checkpoint to get into a container, they will then deploy it into infrastructure so that developers can pick up an API and build a feature. That whole process usually takes months, two to three months, uh, before a model can make it into the hands uh, of the end user of the customer. And that's a reason why uh, there is such a lossy process in putting models into production. And if you're trying to do everything that I described yourself, then you're entering into a world of pain where all of a sudden you have to deal with GPUs and dependencies and how do I uh, put this into a container image and how do I deploy this using Kubernetes. This is a whole new world, a whole new world of pain. But with uh, Hugging Face inference endpoints, uh, pain no more. The pain goes away. You can use Hugging Face endpoints on the hub, pick a model, and get, uh, get your API, your endpoint. All right, but how does it work? It works in three simple steps. Uh, the first one is to pick your model. Any model that is hosted on a Hugging Face Hub can be deployed into an endpoint. There are over 70,000 pre-trained checkpoints available today from Transformers and 25 other libraries. You can pick any of those. And of course, you can pick your own models that you have fine-tuned uh, and that you are hosting on the Hugging Face Hub. Once you get your model, the next step is to select your cloud. Uh, today at launch, we have AWS and Azure available, uh, and then pick your region. Uh, the region you want to pick so that your model lives as close to your data as possible to reduce network overhead. So that's it, three simple steps. And what do you get? What you get is a production solution that keeps your cost super low. It was super important for us uh, to build something that you can use and getting the benefits of like if you were to do it all yourself uh, from scratch, um, but uh, without the pain. And you get predictability on your cost. You pay as you go for what you use. Uh, the costs that we have start at six cents per hour uh, for a CPU core instance and 60 cents per hour for a GPU instance. So put in a credit card and you're ready to go. All right, so you keep your costs low, you pay as you go. But then one of the best things about uh, inference endpoints is that you can bring in any model and you, custom, and you can customize your inference pipeline your way. So by default, we built integration uh, with uh, all the tasks from the transformers library and the sentence transformers library. So you can bring uh, a model uh, and it will work out of the box, leveraging uh, the pipelines. But then what if you want to customize uh, the input uh, that goes into your model? What if you want to customize what comes out of your model? Custom pre-processing, custom post-processing. Well, you can do that very easily with a single Python file, a single handler.py to define a custom pipeline for your model. But what if you don't want to use a transformer or a sentence transformer model? What, do you want, what if you want to use a diffuser model? What if you want to use Optimum to use the accelerated inference pipelines? Well, then you can do so also super easily with the same handler.py file uh, for a custom inference pipeline. And if you want to go all the way custom, you can also bring your own custom uh, container image. So a fully flexible solution for your production needs. Okay, and to talk about this, I want to let Andrea do the talking. Andrea is a data scientist at Music Smash. Uh, they are the world leading music data company. And with Hugging Face endpoints, they were able to deploy super easily, super quick, uh, fully custom uh, inference pipeline to generate custom embeddings uh, from lyrics. So here's what Andrea had to say about it. The coolest thing was how easy it was to define a complete custom interface from the model to the inference process. It just took us a couple of hours to adapt our code and have a functioning and totally custom endpoint. So we started from like two to three months to take a model to production, and now we have a couple of hours. Okay, but what if you want to customize uh, what goes uh, under the hood? Uh, well, you can do so by going into the advanced configuration menu and select the exact accelerator that you want to use for your model. 
You have various choices of CPU accelerators, leveraging Intel Ice Lake of GPU accelerators, and you can select the right size for your model. And for auto scaling, it's as easy as setting the minimum and the maximum numbers of replicas so that your endpoint will scale up and down as the number of requests uh, evolves. So super easy auto scaling, super easy way to set, set up the exact infrastructure that you need. And then once your model is up as an endpoint, the MLOps part of it becomes completely integrated and easy. You get logs, you get monitoring, you can customize your analytics routes. You can create, update, delete, and manage all of your endpoints programmatically. And you can easily go from one model revision to the next uh, using the Hugging Face Hub uh, versions. All right. So to talk about uh, this, um, I want to uh, uh, refer Gareth, who is a product manager at Pinecone. Pinecone.io uh, is a smart vector database for intelligent search. And the first thing that customers need to do to use a leverage Pinecone for intelligent search is to create embeddings. So here's what Gareth had to say. We're able to choose an off-the-shelf model that's very common for our customers to get started with and set it so that it can be configured to handle over 100 requests per second with just a few button clicks. So that's automated auto scaling with hiding face inference endpoints. But then what about security? So with security in inference endpoints, you get three different security levels for each endpoint. So here pictured in green, the public setting, so that your endpoint is available from the internet with encrypted uh, communication connection. The protected mode here pictured in purple allows you to only accept requests authenticated with a hugging face token. And then the most secure of all, the private setting, leverages under the hood AWS private link or Azure private link to establish a direct connection between your VPC and the Hugging Face endpoint in the same region of the same cloud so that when running inference, there is never any data that leaves on the internet. So with uh, the private endpoints, you have a ready to go solution that is compliant with financial services use cases, healthcare use cases, all the regulated use cases. And to talk about this, I want to bring to the stage uh, Tufik and Bryce. Tufik is a CTO and co-founder at Family. Uh, they build uh, healthcare experiences that reduce uh, the hospitalizations through uh, machine learning. Hi, I'm Tofik. I'm the co-founder and CTO of the family uh, from John Health. And I'm Bryce. I'm a senior software engineer at Family. And uh, Family is a smart care management platform that helps medical groups, health systems uh, deliver proactive care for high-risk patients between their office visits. And we do that through simple conversational messaging. So let's say you've got elderly parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles with chronic conditions like diabetes, hypertension, heart conditions, et cetera. They might see their doctor two to three times a year. And with family, they'll talk to their doctor's office two to three times a month and address any issues before they become really uh, costly complications or complex issues. Uh, and so doing that, we've built uh, probably the largest conversational data set between patients and clinicians. And we're building out really an early detection, early intervention system at population health scale. And so as you can imagine, that involves a lot of machine learning. So with a data set containing millions of healthcare conversations, Family uses transformer models to improve the quality of uh, care that patients receive. A simple example is when a patient messages their doctor using family. The first thing to read what they wrote is a transformer-based classification model. That model triages the message's urgency and our application routes at the port. Uh, within the first month of that model's launch, it played a part in preventing numerous hospitalizations. And that's really only the tip of the iceberg for what we've done and what we plan to do with transformers. Uh, that's why we need a solution for deploying them quickly and efficiently. So before inference endpoints, uh, we deployed our models using an in-house architecture built on AWS Lambda and API Gateway. And we're, we're a growing startup with a lot of work and limited bandwidth. So that means that any time we spent uh, creating and maintaining this architecture prevented us from working on other initiatives. 
uh, between authentication, versioning, monitoring, the maintenance costs of building it ourselves really added up over time. Uh, without inference endpoints, we would have spent a lot more time on, on those non-core activities, and we would have eventually needed to expand our infrastructure team to keep up with all the models that we are working on. So, uh, my favorite thing has been just how easy it is to start using. You know, within a few hours, literally, of reading the docs for the first time, we were able to get a model deployed, and it took almost no new code. Um, deploying that same model with AWS using our old architecture took uh, often a week's worth of developer time. So having it down almost no time was uh, game-changing, to say the least. Uh, yeah, and in, in addition to that, uh, being able to deploy so seamlessly, that's more of our... Uh, more members of our team develop, deploy, and test models without bothering someone from the infrastructure team. Thanks to inference endpoints, we now basically spend all of our time on R&D, not fiddling with AWS. Mm, that's huge. So working in healthcare, data security is paramount. You've got HIPAA, uh, and you've got to be able uh, to really ensure that your data stays secure. So our clients and their patients, they entrust us with very personal protected health information. And we are legally and morally obligated to secure the data. And data breaches and HIPAA violations are existential risk for a company. That's the thing that keeps you up at night. Uh, as, uh, and so being able to deploy endpoints using private link tagging base provides that peace of mind uh, that both the, uh, the PHI laden data is not susceptible to man in the middle attacks or, and that our endpoints will never be accessible by any anyone other than uh, our application. And that uh, definitely helps me sleep way easier at night. <laughs> I think pretty much anyone uh, using transformer models uh, could benefit from using inference endpoints. Uh, if you haven't already built a robust, performant, fault-tolerant system for inference, then it's pretty much a no-brainer. Uh, and even if you have built a system like that, I bet that you spend more money maintaining it than you would using inference endpoints. Thank you so much, Andrea, Gareth. To feed Bryce uh, for bringing your 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 testimony, your experience of having face inference endpoints uh, to to us today. Uh, there are more uh, customer success stories available if you go to uh, huggingface.co slash inference endpoints. You can learn more about uh, music matches experience, about um, families experience, about pine cones experience, and about waymarks experience. So check it out. But first. Let me uh, recap a little bit everything that we covered. So today, uh, with uh, Hugging Face Inference Endpoints, you have a solution to easily deploy your models um, in a solution that keeps your costs down, where you pay as you go, you have predictable pricing um, as your application scales, uh, a solution that gives you all of the MLOps uh, uh, benefits in just a single, uh, a few clicks, sorry. <laughs> you can select your instance type, you can set your auto scaling and you're ready to go. It's a solution that is fully flexible. If you have custom pre-processing, custom post-processing, whichever type of machine learning model you want to deploy, you can do so easily with inference endpoints. And it's a solution that gives you security all the way uh, to uh, direct VPC connection with uh, private endpoints uh, so that your data never uh, leaves on the internet. And so, okay, uh, that's enough talking about it. Uh, now I want to let Philippe uh, show you uh, how it works, how you can use uh, inference endpoints today uh, 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 right from the hub and deploy your models in a few clicks. So with this, I'll let you take it over, Philip. Awesome. So, hey, um, what we are going to do in the demo now is we will deploy one model um, and then like show all of the, the features Jeff mentioned um, during his uh, presentation. This includes logs, metrics. We can also take a quick look um, because somebody asked them how a custom handle looks for like an optimized model. And then we can answer some questions. So what you can see on the screen is currently like the, the creation view of the UI. So 
endpoints will be available through a UI, um, which you can access on ui.endpoints.hagenfels.co. And uh, has also like everything you do is programmatically accessible, meaning you can integrate it into your CI pipelines and everything we will do in the UI can be done programmatically. And in the documentation, there is um, basically a whole Swagger UI with all of the available routes where you can take a look uh, on what you can do programmatically. Okay, so the first step basically, um, since every endpoint is connected to a Hugging Face repository, is to select our repository, which includes our model or models. So you can, for example, have like multiple models in one repository and then work um, with a custom handle to like load both of them. What we are going to do in the example, since transformers are not only limited to text anymore, we will use uh, an image model. We will use a bit model from Google for image classification. We have like a search integrated. So if you are not finding your repository, you might um, need to check it again for permission. And then each endpoint has a name. We will go with image classification. And then the next step would be to select the cloud. We will stay with AWS, but since I am in Germany, this means I will go with the Europe region. And then I would be ready to deploy my endpoint. Um, that's something we are going to do. And in addition, um, so if you want to change the instance type or the auto scaling, you can click on advanced configuration and then select your instance type. Maybe we should update it to a bigger CPU instance for now and um, the replica are okay and we want it to be protected. So only um, my organizations and people who are in my hiking phase organization can use the endpoint. And now what's going to happen on the backend side is basically we are creating unique image artifacts, which include the model weights and the inference serving container and, and are then decoupled from the, wait, Jeff is playing around with the screen, uh, are then decoupled from the hugging phase hub. So each endpoint is uniquely to a specific state and a revision. This means that you can like update a revision or in case something is like not available on the hiding phase side, your endpoint stays up and running. And um, each endpoint has also a unique uh, URI, which we will see in a minute. And we can then also run inference, as you know, from the model cards, as well as update our endpoint. But while the container is building, we can take another look at an already deployed endpoint, which um, is the distal bird model, which was optimized with Optimum. It is basically a simple, dynamic quantization and then some graph operation, uh, yeah, few fused operators for um, the CPU I'm going to use. And um, that's the view you have when you have a deployed endpoint, you will have our, your, your unique URI and you have the inference widget and then you can immediately try your endpoint. Maybe we should use the prompt, which makes a bit more sense. So um, I was on the Oktoberfest on the weekend, but uh, on a bad case, I lost my credit card and the model was fine-tuned on the Banking 77 data set. And when we scroll down a bit, we should see, okay, it is correctly labeled with lost or stolen card. So that's something it, which works. And also you can see there are like the examples available, which you might know from the Hugging Face app. And then as we mentioned, we have logs and analytics or metrics available. So logs, you have your logs to your running container. Here we can see all of the requests. So while Jeff was presenting uh, the slides, I con continue, continuously ran some requests. And here we can see the request time for our model. Since I used a pretty small prompt, the latency is super low, but we can also uh, um, look down a bit um, to have more requests. And also we can see, I guess, through my request, my model scaled up and I also started a second pod. In addition to this, we also have logs available for the building part, meaning if during your creation of your endpoint, for whatever reason, um, you try to deploy a model where you don't have access or something else didn't work out, you have logs available to like all of like the creation of your endpoint. And here you can see that we downloaded a model from the Hugging Face Hub. Okay, and then what do we have available for analytics? Um, wait, this should bring up some nice metrics, except all of you went to, yeah, okay, now, 
Um, currently, we have the replica hour account available. We have the total number of requests, and then we have an average and the P95 latency. Something to mention for the average and P95 latency, it is calculated um, over the whole last 30 minutes and then divided or took the percentile of, of it, which means, as you can see here, beginning of, of 8, when I deployed uh, 18 or 6 p.m., when I deployed the endpoint, it was a super high P95 latency since the first request takes some time to like validate your token and um, allocate all of the resources. But when you, as you can see, when I had like my continuous like request load going on, it was super low. And then also you can see basically the load for over the duration when I send a request. Here you will also see five um, 100 requests or five um, 501, for example, if someone which is not authorized to your endpoint tries to send request. OK, we can go back to our image classification. OK, the load balancer is not ready, which should take maybe 30 seconds or something more, and then the endpoint is ready. Normally, the, the endpoint creation takes three to five minutes. It really depends on if it's the first endpoint into your account, which might take a bit longer since we are um, creating some DNS records and like creating the first load balancer, um, which takes some time. But then normally, the creation really depends on how big your model is. If your model is bigger, then of course, creating the image and uh, up and downloading the model takes a bit longer. Maybe we can answer one or two questions while we wait for the request or for the, the endpoint to be up. I've been trying to keep up with uh, with all the questions. Lots of great questions uh, here. Um, how does the auto scale works? Um, it works by looking at the utilization um, of uh, the current infrastructure for your endpoint. So as uh, you get more utilization, uh, the uh, endpoint will will scale up with the number of replicas uh, of, uh, of the container. Is it possible to integrate the system with Kubernetes? Well, the whole point of inference endpoints is that you don't have to fiddle uh, with uh, deploying and scaling infrastructure with Kubernetes. Um, so all that is abstracted. Um, any idea how to charge money per inference with a hosted model? Uh, that's, a, that's a good question. Here, we're really uh, uh, taking that uh, model um, upside down, and we're providing an easy-to-use, low-cost uh, production infrastructure solution. Um, how you monetize your service with your end users and customers is really up to you. Um, what is the default image that's being run to service the models? This is a Flask server and VDF Triton server. Um, so inference endpoints will create an optimized image uh, depending on what type of model uh, you've uh, selected, depending on what type of instance you've selected, and will sort of automatically uh, create uh, the, the, the optimized image container for that. Um, using um, uh, built-in transformer pipelines and integrating with your customization via the handler.py uh, file. Mm. Yeah, but maybe to, to add, so it's like we provide like this default software serving container working with the transformers tag, tasks and the custom handler, but it doesn't mean that you cannot use like TF serving, for example, or Triton if you want to use Triton. That's what we enabled through like the custom container where you could then like provide either like a public image or a private image from your ECR or ACR registry basically. And since Jeff answered some questions, my endpoint got ready. And now as you can see, since we have an image endpoint, I also have the nice image um, widget, which you might know from the Hugging Face Hub. And I um, use the test image, which is uh, Hugging Face Merge and my um, endpoint correctly classified it as jersey, t-shirts, um, yeah, prospects. Maybe there are like some prospects or mailbags, and also a backpack might be there. I'm not really sure, but our model works. And also something nice to mention, so we can like also take a look at the JSON output. So in case you are not sure about the API structure, or you want to make sure, okay, what's what what's getting the what's the response, or if your application team or front end team needs to know, okay what is basically the body I'm expecting as a response. They can like open the UI basically and check the run and inference and check the, the request. And also there's the copy as curl button, which uh, creates a curl statement from the exact request we run, but I'm not going to show it since we'll, <laughs> it will include 
our um, token we need to send request. And maybe then since we have a few more minutes left uh, before we go to the question, so I can um, show how a custom handler looks. Um, we have several um, already pre-created endpoints template available on the Hagen Face Hub. Those are available through the endpoints template tag. We have uh, one for uh, OCR, we have uh, sentence embedding, we have one for clip. Uh, we also have a stable diffusion demo. We have, and then of course, our distributed Onyx model. And in there, um, all requirements for creating a custom handler is a handler.py file, um, which is uh, yeah, a, a simple Python class with an endpoint handler. And this endpoint handler needs to have two methods, which is the init method and the call method. The init method will be called on endpoint creation. And we will, it will receive one argument, which is the path to where all other repository artifacts are stored. So basically we get a path where all of our files from our repository are stored, which include our model files and configuration files. And for our um, accelerated model, we are using the ORT model class from the optimum library, loading our tokenizer, and then creating our pipeline using our ORT model. And then for a call, uh, we receive a, yeah, a JSON input with inputs as key and also parameters in case we want to customize it. And then we are running inference and returning back the dictionary, which will then be converted into a JSON again. And also, um, since we are using Optimum, which is not pre-installed into our container, we are adding a requirement TXT with the Optimum version and in this case, the Onyx runtime um, sub package for it, meaning that you can also install um, custom Python packages into your endpoint. Okay. Um, that, that's mostly it for the demo. Um, I think, I'm not sure if we have shared all links yet, so you can get started by going to hiking-phase-ui.endpoints.co. Um, and if you are not having a, yeah, a plan set up, you will see some nice small little prompt explaining basically the next steps you need to take to, to get started. And then also um, we have documentation available, um, which includes basically everything we have shown. It includes all of the security concepts. You have uh, like the supported tasks, including the expected uh, request payload. You have the API references with um, the integrated Swagger UI. So you can like, okay, get a better feeling of how the, the backend API works. And then we have several guides for, okay, how can I access the UI or the solution? How can I create my first endpoint? And also um, very detailed examples on how can I create a custom handler? For example, OpenAI has released the, the Whisper model um, last week. I guess every one of us have seen or heard about it on social media. We already have created uh, in an example for it on how you can deploy it. Sure, when I, uh, this not opening. Oh. Okay, maybe the link is wrong, but it's there. I can share it, which basically is really, again, custom Python class. And then we have our whisper package, which is um, currently installed from the uh, OpenAI repository and then, uh, you can like try it out if you are interested in it. It's it's super simple to, to get started. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much, Philip. That was super cool. We saw how you were able to create from scratch uh, a new endpoint in just a few minutes. Uh, see the latency of each request, how you get the whole uh, logs about uh, the whole history. So you have a good sense of the volume you're hitting, uh, the performance of the solution, uh, how the auto scaling works. Uh, so really, really cool. Um, there were so many questions. I tried to answer as many as I could uh, while you were doing the demo. Uh, plenty I didn't get to. Perhaps we can take a uh, five to ten minutes, um, and uh, and try to uh, uh, to to answer those. Um, from Critica, do we have model accuracy monitor feature available in inference endpoint? Maybe supporting uh, ML data drifts.
Is that something for me or? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sort of like picking the questions and like. Okay. Yeah. So, so what what you have seen on like the the analytics tab is basically in the UI for Prometheus. So each endpoint has available Prometheus, um, yeah, route you can query. Uh, I'm not super familiar what Databricks uh, has integrated or like how you can integrate your analytics into Databricks, but that's a way to like integrate the analytics into your um, model monitoring system, or if ML flow or something has some kind of specific Python integration you might want to add. That's of course doable through a custom handler. And in there you can like make the calls for your, your model drift or like saving the data um, to your backend. Awesome. I think that Alma asked uh, a few times already, is it possible to use gRPC? That's a good question. So, so currently the, the default container we have used is um, only supporting HTTP to make it way easier for everyone to get started and integrate. But the custom container should work with gRPC. Um, we haven't tested it yet. You, maybe you should give it a try, but like there are no like technical limitations which wouldn't allow gRPC to not work. And then we have Tristan asking about, uh, can I deploy Bloom? Um, yes, or I, I would say it depends. Um, you can deploy Bloom, but for this you would need um, the biggest instance, which is the um, yeah, an instance with um, eight A100 um, GPUs. And for this, we might need to work with you together since all of us know there's like some kind of GPU shortage going on. But yes, you can like definitely um, deploy Bloom on inference endpoints with the correct instance setup. Yeah, Christian, uh, Bloom is the largest multilingual open source model uh, that was released by Big Science 176 billion parameters uh, just recently. And I, I, we need to uh, address strangers' questions because uh, they asked it uh, many, many times. Hey, will the source code behind this be available on GitHub? Um, so when you're deploying an endpoint, you're pulling um, a repository uh, from the Hugging Face Hub, uh, a model. So we have a bunch of uh, examples. Uh, in the uh, inference endpoints documentation that are open source. And you can see how uh, uh, all these recipes uh, to create uh, specific endpoints, the code of inference endpoints, the solution, like how the auto scaling works and all that, uh, that's, uh, that will not be released uh, as open source. Um, oh, how do you decide between horizontal and vertical uh, versus vertical scaling? Uh, on our end from Abhinav. Don't take that, Philip. Yeah, that, that's a good question. Um, so the good thing is that um, billing wise, it doesn't make any difference since an instance with one CPU uh, costs half as much as an instance with two CPU. Meaning if you vertically scale your instance with one CPU to two CPU, you are basically doubling the cost, but if you run two one CPU replicas, it's also double the cost. So from, from a pricing perspective, it's the same. And then from um, like a perspective of what you should do, I think it really depends on your use case. So more the more CPUs you have, the, the more power, I guess, your, your model has, meaning you can like go faster with latency, but if you have more replica, you could handle more requests in parallel, meaning you could have a higher throughput. It really depends on, on your use case and what you would like to do. Zoe, I was asking, does the number of inference requests matter for pricing or just uptime? Uptime is really uptime, meaning it's really the, the, uh, the compute infrastructure uh, that your endpoint is currently using. So what the, the, the parameters are, which instance type you've selected, and then uh, how the scaling is uh, dynamically uh, evolving. Um, and then, sorry, I lost it. Yeah, maybe I can pick one. There was a question from Badara. Do you have a plan to support async predictions which could handle long prediction more than one or two, three seconds? So uh, that the good part is you are not sharing resources, meaning you when you create an endpoint, it's really your endpoint. And if you have requests which takes 10 or 15 seconds for like a long generation, 
that's okay. Like nobody will, will break the connection except the client like closest to the connection, meaning you can run already like longer prediction. And if you send more load to your uh, endpoint, it will automatically scale up and then like scale down again. So there's like no plan for like those kind of async predictions since if like one prediction is not taking longer than like, let's say a minute, it should be already kind of doable. And uh, also on the uh, on the auto scaling part, Victor had a great question. Are API calls queued in some way under the hood prior to auto scaling? No. <laughs> so it's really like it's it's um, less magic than you might think of. So it's really like having the same replica split up and then having a round robin concept from for the load balancer to like split the load basically on, on, on the endpoint. So nothing special, no queues, no prioritization. But of course, what you can do with like um, a custom handler, you can like use the Python QSDK to like get in the request and then like offload them to a separate process and then like have your in your self queuing system. Um, that's definitely possible. From uh, Leonardo, uh, how long does it take to deploy a mid-sized model like Burt Large? Say so three to five minutes, is that what you would yes. see? Yeah, three to five minutes. Uh, strange, yes, we have a Discord server. You should join it. Our community is there. It's amazing. Um, uh, yeah, maybe a question possible? for you, for oh, you, yeah, Jeff. Sanka asked, how does the customer support for the service work? Ah. Great question. Uh, so within uh, inference endpoints, uh, you will find a direct uh, link to uh, to send uh, uh, support questions to request uh, additional quota uh, for uh, for your organization. Uh, thanks for posting the Discord. Um, and uh, yeah, we will will create a, a nice community forum category as well uh, for uh, questions that are of interest to uh, to everybody in the community. Uh, will Azure Hugging Face endpoints be deprecated, the service that's now available in Azure Marketplace? No, not at all, because uh, with Azure ML endpoints, uh, you're able to uh, create endpoints within your own uh, Azure tenancy. Uh, so it's a really, really cool benefit, and we're working with tons of customers to enable them to do that. Um, so as, uh, as I said at the beginning, Hugging Face inference endpoints is a fully managed uh, solution where you don't have to worry about uh, all of the underlying infrastructure, uh, we manage it for you in Hugging Faces cloud tenancies. Um, yes, answer that, we'll answer that. Do inference endpoints have any sort of versioning uh, system from Felipe? Um, so first, the model system on the Hugging Face Hub has a versioning system, right? You can use the same uh, sort of version control you would um, with, uh, with the Git project. Uh, and so each commit uh, has a revision ID and you can use that revision ID when you're creating or updating, uh, when you're creating an endpoint. So that means that uh, you can control exactly um, um, what's going to drive predictions what's in uh, underneath uh, your endpoint as you continue developing your model and your model evolves. And you can easily switch from one version of your model to a different version of your model uh, by creating a, a new endpoint. Is there any uh, uh, other part of that question I didn't answer, Philip? No. And then maybe for, for Amy's question, is, is it possible to chain models between several endpoints? Yes, I, I wouldn't suggest it. So like each endpoint has a URL which you can like send requests to. And since you can create a custom handler, you could like send a request once a request comes in. But um, that that shouldn't be like something you should do because then you have like blocking requests and you should either rather like integrate more models into one endpoint or then have like some kind of like third party client um, which sends the request to the endpoints and like make sure that the endpoints are not blocking each other. And then I saw maybe like one last question from Clem. Um, can you give us one minute's overview of the other Hugging Face commercial offerings? <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, today, thanks, Clem, for the question. Great question. Um, today, uh, we offer um, the private hub. Um, so 
there are over a hundred thousands of researchers, data scientists, machine learning engineers that come to the Hugging Face Hub every day to access and work with models. Um, and all these great experience we can deliver to a particular team or company uh, that is uh, deployed specifically for them so that they can collaborate uh, and build machine learning together uh, faster. So that's the private hub. Uh, and then the expert acceleration program, that's the most immediate way we can have impact uh, uh, th uh, through uh, this service uh, with customers uh, by having a machine learning engineer uh, at Hugging Face provide dedicated direct support to guide answer questions uh, uh, from customers as they build uh, with uh, with hugging face um, and thanks for thanks for posting uh, posting the links um, maybe okay one last one Mortessa can I install custom packages in the container using the requirements that text uh, so yes so that's what the custom pipeline uh, feature with the handler handler uh, that uh, py file uh, exactly does. Um, and if you want to bring your own uh, uh, container image, you can do that as well. All right. What, what, are, what are we missing? What we're missing is uh, for you guys to, uh, to go and, uh, and uh, try it out. Um, uh, so yeah, I hope, I hope you have fun with it and you build amazing things. Yeah, Philip? Yeah, I just wanted to ask Alex question. Um, there's currently like no budgets, so it's really based on what you use. So if you like start an endpoint now, you can like, let's say you want to test it for a day to see if it's working for you and then you stop it. It's really like for this, this one day. But um, if you're like interested in some budgets, maybe you like feel free to contact us and maybe we can work something out which would fit for you. The recording will be available. I uh, will send you an email uh, after this so you, that you can access it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we're super excited. Can't wait to see what you guys build with Hugging Face in front endpoints. All right. Team Hugging Face signing off. <laughs>